All right. So let's go through some of the questions. And while then doing that, actually, let me let me open up a file. There you go. All right. So question number one that I got here was, so if I was working with a client and they asked for thumbnails, I know every studio is different and everything, but which stage of rendering should I be sending off? I don't want them to have to pay for over polished piece that they don't want, but I also don't want to hand them crap. Would it be like something between two and three in the in this image or attached images? And I already saw those images. Uh, yeah, I think those are fine. Um, just remember what I, I talked about, right? And this is me just demoing. I'm not really showing you an example. Um, remember what I always would say is like clarity, right? Um, your thumbnails should always be clear. The more clear your thumbnails are, the more um, or like less of a headache you'll have later. I find that when I provide thumbnails or sketches that are a little too ambiguous, uh, that my clients usually won't give you negative feedback, nor will they give you perfect feedback. It'll just be like feedback. And based off of the feedback, I will make changes. And as you probably experienced in the class and I experienced a lot, if you don't really have clarity of like what the final image is supposed to be, and you provide, you know, these rough looking thumbnails and then you try to render them, there's a good chance that there'll be like a Rorschach effect where your your images as they start to come together become more and more wrong and not what everybody was expecting, including yourself sometimes. Sometimes what you thought you were able to do doesn't come to fruition. And like you experienced in the class, I, I'm assured. And so for me, it's about clarity. So if your thumbnails are really, really rough, but there's very clear idea of what they're supposed to be then that's fine but in most cases that's not enough like rough designs typically do not have enough information my thumbnails are pretty well defined uh and i will speak to another part of your question in just a second but um yeah i just have pretty defined thumbnails uh because i want to make sure that they're giving me feedback like oh i don't like the hair or i don't like the pants that you put on there or oh, I love this pants or I love this concept. You know, this, these ideas are really rad. And it's like, we all understand what ideas I put forth and we can move forward with, you know what I mean? Um, but you, you also said something like, you know, if my clients asks for thumbnails, like, you know, what kind of quality should I go for? Well, the, the, the idea that your clients would even ask for thumbnails specifically uh, I don't think it's as common as you might think, right? In fact, most times people will just be like, yeah, just give us whatever, you know, uh, because most people that are you're interfacing with aren't necessarily, you know, amazing artists. They're just like, you know, people who want to hire you because you are the amazing artist. And so they'll just be like, yeah, here's a brief, like Dragon Warrior 5, whatever, and whatever that means. And then you just, you just got to like figure that out and show them some variations and some ideas sometimes clients will be like oh yeah we want some rough sketches you know and maybe they'll even give you a number of rough sketches that they would like to see but in reality it's it's actually less it's it's like when you go to a, a restaurant and you order something to eat it's not like you're asking them ex exactly how they're going to cook it too you know I mean, you might like maybe for eggs, you might want it scrambled or something, you know, but as far as how they scramble them, you're not going to like go in the kitchen and be like, no, no, no. Like, I want you to have the heat at low with like a cast iron pan, you know, usually you just order the food and then let the chef decide how to prepare it, you know? <clears throat> and I feel us artists are the same way. We're the chefs, right? We're, we're given something ordered from a menu the, the menu in this case is from our portfolio our body of work they're like ah you could draw monsters can you draw this type of monster and then you just deliver right appetizers but the appetizers should again not be like like if you're serving uh fish for instance and your appetizers are like um 
if it's supposed to resemble the main course and your appetizers are like i don't know gummy bears that makes no sense you know um you want something that is relevant to the final product so yeah clarity is really all that matters don't don't ever worry about the finality of your images focus on the clarity of your images and as you become more and more clear on what the the vision is for the final design that's when rendering becomes more and more important right that's when you worry about like getting the the pixels to be perfect but anyway yeah that's it um lastly i feel like i'm somewhere in the skill set mine uh, middle ground i've spent years doing exactly what you say not to do which is just try everything my portfolio is a mixture of landscapes characters vehicles weapons 3d 2d you name it <coughs> and now i'm at the point where i'm just going to pick a thing and run at it for my portfolio character design yeah i agree uh, obviously this is my advice to people so the more you take that advice, <laughs> the more I agree with it. Um, I think that when people find themselves um, doing all sorts of stuff in their portfolio, it's only as a reaction to they don't really know what they want to do in general. They just want to get a job. So they just do everything. They kind of like grab a bunch of darts and throw it at a dartboard. But when you're more... Um, you're focused on hitting the bullseye, you know, and you're aiming more with, um, with some like, you know, uh, accuracy, then you will go where you need to go. So for instance, like on a dartboard, you know, not always going for the bullseye is what you want, right? And there's different types of versions of the game where you can go for different parts of the dartboard. And so if, if you just had the approach of just throwing all the darts all at once and it hits, let's say the 10, uh, yeah, cool, cool. You got the 10. It's a high number or higher, higher than most, but like you don't want to do the 10. You want to do maybe threes something. That's what, actually what you wanted to get. You wanted to get a three to get, I don't know, a specific score. Right. And a good equivalent of this is that let's say you did a bunch of 3d and now you get jobs doing 3d. You might find that you don't actually like 3d. And now you're stuck kind of doing it because as you work in the industry doing 3D, you'll do more and more portfolio pieces that are in 3D and your portfolio will start to slowly but surely become a 3D portfolio. And then all of a sudden your, your, your whole art career is built around something that you don't really care about. You were just trying to get a job, you know? So it's really important to kind of respect this uh, because once you realize that this is the case, you know, sometimes it's a little too late. Uh, and when it's too late, it's okay. You can still find a way around it. It's just now becomes even harder versus before you really begin your career, you can create this kind of opportunity to spend a lot of your time in the right places, you know? Uh, so for instance, if you focus on character design, you can focus on character design. You know what I mean? And so, yeah, I, uh, I understand the need to try a bunch of this stuff. You know, you guys are afraid. You just want to make some, some money, work in this industry. And it just seems reasonable. Um, but it's, it's not a great strategy in the long term, in my opinion. I think it's better to have a little bit more focus. Um, but yeah, there's nothing wrong with trying to get diverse in your abilities. Just pick a thing first. You know? But currently I am, um, I love programming. So I've been uh, practicing lots of programming. Uh, I like doing some 3D stuff. So I've been practicing a lot of 3D stuff as well, you know, but I am always still like creature character person, you know, this is what I do a lot of. I love drawing creatures. And I love drawing characters. <clears throat> so this is what I'm going to do, I'm ride or die, you know? Um, but yeah, I think in terms of like, you know, your perf like where you're at, because I think you're, you know, I think there's a part of your question that I was reading here. Yeah. About like how to get a job in the industry. And I mentioned this in actually the yesterday's Q and A. So feel free to watch that once I upload it, I'm going to upload both of these once they're done. Um, but I mentioned in that one that, you know, 
it really is all about networking and quality of portfolio. And I'm not going to repeat myself too much. So I'm just going to kind of say something a little bit different than I said yesterday. And that is that people try to find an alternative, you know, because they, they want it to be a little bit more complicated than like, you just got to post a lot of work and you got to treat, keep trying to make good work. It's like such an obvious thing to do, which is like, you know, um, make good portfolio and, and, and post it often and share it with people. It seems so like, like simple, but that's the same way for a lot of things. <clears throat> people always want to find a more complicated solution um, because it just feels like it's supposed to be. And if they just figure out what that complicated solution is, it's going to make their life a lot easier. But the complicated solution is the simple one, you know? Like it's the same with like um, exercise and diet. Like it's really just about consistent exercise and consistent healthy eating. If you don't do these things, you're going to have a hard time. You know what I mean? Um, right now I am planning on like learning Spanish, right? Um, and so I've already kind of committed myself to spend at least um, about 15 to 20 minutes every day to just learn a little bit of Spanish uh, minimum, you know? And uh, yeah, it's, it's something that I anticipate that I'll get pretty good at speaking within a year or so if I keep practicing. <clears throat> but it's like that diligence. There's something magical about it. It's just got to keep doing it. But like a lot of people tend to not do that. People tend to focus on like, again, what is like the easiest solution today? But there's this really great quote that I heard once that's like, um, you know, uh, if you do the easy stuff now, you're going to have a harder life. And if you do the hard stuff now, you're going to have an easier life. And I always try to think this way. And so when it comes to building your portfolio, you should think this, this way. You should be like, all right, I'm just going to work on my portfolio every single day. I'm going to make a new piece maybe once a week that will put into my portfolio to replace the pieces that I don't feel as confident about. Right, it's totally an awesome strategy, you know? And, you know, following this methodology might be really like simple, but you'll find that in like, if you'd follow this strategy for years, you'll build a pretty powerful portfolio, you know? That's all I did when I came to my career. So I highly recommend doing that. Uh, you can't control any other circumstance, you know what I mean? Like you can't control the the industry and how it's going to uh shift and pull in terms of how they're hiring and when they can hire not all the jobs will be available at all times you know um but if you're just constantly relevant and sharing your work uh consistently you will find more opportunities than less uh, i'm pretty much given a job opportunity uh relatively frequently at least like once or twice uh every two weeks almost like once a week. And I just turn down most of them or just don't respond just because I don't have time to. <clears throat> and because of this fact, I just, I just don't want stress. And I know that the more I share my work, the more people reach out to me, meaning that the more I have my artwork online available for people to scope out, the more I can get uh, jobs. And so for me, it's only became an exponential growth, meaning that like now I just have way more opportunities than I would have, you know, a few years ago. But it's it's just how things get when you start to be consistent, you know. It's that slow burn that people just tend not to care about. People want that quick, quick and easy, you know, which is totally understandable. I think most people are uh, re reasonable when they want these types of things because. You don't want to struggle for like stuff. And I agree with this sentiment, to be honest. I think that things should be a little bit easier for most people. But unfortunately, that's just not how it is currently. Maybe in time it will be. But I doubt it. I, I literally was on um, uh, Instagram this morning. I was, I was walking my dog. And then I uh, posted a piece of artwork I did yesterday. And... Um, just saw somebody like go on this crazy rant about like vaccines and like governments and like um, uh, genders and like just all of the things that are like conspiracy 
<laughs> and like a anti-woke culture and this is like one of the most prolific artists in our industry and i was just like you all right my guy <laughs> and i feel like a lot of people are like this nowadays people are really on edge uh, i'm not immune to this either i was in i think 2017 i was pretty pretty triggered pretty frequently but i realized it's kind of a waste of time <clears throat> you know and although i was able to kind of get my self to realize that this was just a waste of my time and effort to be this way to kind of just constantly be upset about everything um I, I know a lot of people just don't do that most people will stay upset for like the rest of their lives and it's it sucks and so yeah just remember that things are going to be challenging uh you just gotta just keep putting up that battle you know anyway let me let me see so yeah so i'll speak to the college thing and then i'm gonna do a, re a review of um of min stuff um <clears throat> so i get it so you're about to leave college you're thinking to yourself all right well now i need to get a job and you might find that it's not as simple as that and that college lied to you um, there is a huge amount of people who graduate from college and actually do not have a career waiting for them. Um, in fact, this is like one of the greatest American lies in, in our culture is this idea that college and this career is destined. I think that what ends up happening is that people go to college because remember I was mentioned earlier, they want the easier strategy and college kind of promises this idea of like, you just finish, you'll be all right. But then when you finish, uh, you, you, you're not all right. It sucks. Uh, and then I know a lot of people who to this day are still paying off their college, uh, debt. And it's like remarkable amount of money. Uh, and the way that debtors work too, is like, it's disgusting. So for instance, um, let's say you go to college for like seventy thousand dollars and then you graduate and you can't pay that like i said because you won't actually have a job in the industry uh or in the career that you're looking for you so you might still just be working your regular old nine to five you know fast food joint and so then you have to like defer your um your loans meaning that you put it on pause but what they do is they add interest to your overall payment so and they add interest on all of it including your interest so if like, if you had like a 10 percent interest on seventy thousand, so they just tap uh like uh tack on another seven thousand and then the next year they tack on seventy seven hundred right and then the next year uh ten percent of that overall total which i don't know the math exactly but it, you end up <clears throat> in a few years having tons of extra debt. And then when you start to pay it off, um, it starts becoming a runaway effect that you will never be, it's like, it seems like you'll never be able to pay it off. And so for instance, like I have friends who had like $80,000 debts and they paid like $60,000 into their debt and they still owe like $50,000, you know, it's like, it's fucking retarded and and so it's like this great lie you know and some of my friends are making great money and they still can't own a home you know uh including myself like i'm in the same situation and so uh i think that when people go to come out of school they're really really upset and i want you to not be this type of individual i want you to recognize that this may have been a mistake uh maybe not maybe you get a job it works out but if you don't have any connections, your school didn't help you. And as soon as you leave, your school doesn't care about you. Like that's, that's kind of what happened to a lot of my friends and myself, then it's okay. Like you're not alone, but take, take this opportunity to realize that what you should have been doing all throughout college. And if you, I think you might've realized this like later, which is totally fine. That's what happened to me. Um, then you build your portfolio, then you start to network and then you will create true value for yourself. Okay. Um, once you create that value, it, it is the only way to really get those um, jobs. 
because the college degree, I can tell you as somebody who recruits concept artists and other artists of any of multiple creeds, um, we never look at the college degree. It's just not a thing. Okay. Like we're not like, okay, like who went to art center? Who went to Otis? You know, who went to Ringling or whatever? We're like, nah, it's like this person's portfolio is badass. Let's hire them. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and so, yeah, portfolio, my dude. Like it's just how it is. But you should be thankful that it's that simple. I think that if it was more complicated, that would suck. Uh, but it's actually very simple. It's, uh, most people can get a job in this industry based off of their merits. And that's how it should be. It should be based off of merits. Um, okay, let's take a mini break and scope out Min Ho's work. So Min just asked in general, is he prepared or is there anything he can do to improve his portfolio? And I would say, Min, if you're here or not, um, or if you're listening to this later, uh, I, I think I've already told you this in class. I'm going to tell you again. I think you're very capable of work. Um, I think that the only thing you might want to try to do is just diversify your character lineups, you know, because you have some cool like anime sci-fi type stuff here and you have some fantasy, you have some contemporary. I would say just keep making different types of characters. You might want to try also like um, doing fan art concepts. And this doesn't mean like you would take like Pikachu and just draw Pikachu exactly. It'd be like, okay, it, what if Pikachu was, you know, in like a mech movie and he was a mech, you know? Like, what would that look like? As funny as that might sound as like a good exercise, um, if you really think about what concept art is uh, and a lot of times what we do, like for instance, when I got hired on StarCraft, or the Blizzard team, and I worked on StarCraft, and I was told to redesign the High Templar, the Zealot, and the Archon um, to be more cinematic. Like, it's kind of like doing fan art, except I was getting paid for it. You know what I mean? Like, I would have done that anyway. <laughs> uh, I've done it before, like stuff like this, where I'm like, I take like a concept like Mega Man, and I'll say, what does Mega Man look like if he was like in a live action movie? You know? And the chances of that happening can exist, you know? Uh, for instance, I did like the robot designs for the Sonic movie. Like, it would, again, it would be the same principled idea. Like, what if there was a real life version of Sonic? What would that look like? Uh, and if I was given the opportunity to actually redesign Sonic, I think I could have done something there too. Uh, that would have appeased the fans and also feel a little bit more realistic. I think that they bend the knee to make it look exactly like Sonic in the, in the game but there is a version of sonic that could have looked like sonic from the game but also a little bit more badass the same way i feel about the transformers like the transformers are resemble it uh resemble the transformers from the tv show but they're not exactly you know but anyway um yeah i i don't have anything negative to say though i think you've done really well uh obviously i think there's still room to improve like in terms of character designs and proportions and all this type of stuff but uh, you are on your on the right path to do that. So it's just a matter of continuously doing that. And I think you're in another class of mine. You just can't get enough. So we'll talk more about it then. Okay. Maybe that's what we'll do. We'll do the fan art type stuff and we'll, we'll move on that. Um, yeah. And I like that you have these things organized because it allows us to kind of ignore anything that we don't really care for. Right. But I could tell you right now, you can just get rid of your traditional works. Nobody cares about this. Uh, I mean, other artists care, but you're not going to sway anybody if they're like, ooh, traditional work? Okay, now we're going to hire you. Okay. Uh, you got to think of it as like, let's say you work at, um, I don't know, like Best Buy. Okay. And you're you know you are pretty tech savvy you know how to build computers and stuff like that and it helps you know your ability to work at best buy that's really what matters and they put it in the pc section but then also in terms of pc like you're really good at like counter-strike you know and so although that knowledge might help you become a, a stronger um or become a more intelligent PC owner because let's say 
uh, or maybe not Counter Strike. Counter Strike might be simple. I don't know. Just like you have, you play like all of the best games, okay, and you really get a lot of them, and you get like the best internet and best whatever. Um, but the actual being good at the video game is not as important as the technical skill that you needed to be able to sell computer parts to people. You know, it just gives you that edge. That's how I feel traditional uh, work is, right? Like it's really a useful tool to be able to know what anatomy looks like and how to paint the figure. But if it's not applied to what really matters, which is the character design stuff, um, it's not that big of a deal, you know? And so I would just not even show that stuff, just focus on what you actually want to do. Like I would probably even get rid of the environment stuff and just do robot designs, character designs, and maybe illustrations because character illustrations are similar and everything else can go, all right? But good stuff. All righty. Oh, I don't know if you guys saw this, but I shared some, um, the love, death, and robot stuff I did. Do you see this? So this no. was this was from the first season, uh, Beyond the Ecula Rift, the one where the lady comes out from the shadows and it's this like weird bug monster. So this is the the original design, and they they were pretty faithful to it. Actually, it's pretty cool. Amazing. Yeah, but this other design, they were not faithful to it. And I, I think I, I, I'm okay with that. In fact, I remember they reached out to me to do some more revisions, uh, but I don't think it was available uh, at the time. So they moved on to a couple other artists. Uh, and in the credits, they had me first. And then there's two other artists. So those artists uh, definitely made it more um, PG, in my opinion. Because <laughs> what you're about to see here is not so PG. It's super gross. <laughs> right? Like... Like, this is like the idea is that there's like a monster Santa, right? And this is actually the back of the monster that looks like a Santa Claus. Like, if you look at it from a specific angle, <laughs> but it's really just the back of the monster. And this is the, the, the actual front, but it looks like it's coming out of like a butthole, you know? And like, it's got like finger feet, you know? It's super nasty. You know, and you can get real in there and it's just like real gross. But the heart of this design kind of maintained in the last version. But I, I think they moved these arms up and put it right here so that the arms can come out of the, the face. Uh, and it was all claymation too. So I think they were probably like, this is going to be hard <laughs> to do. But it turned out great. I actually like that short. Man, um, what was my favorite ones? There was like, there was snow in the desert. That one was crazy. That was just like, looked like a real ass movie. Uh, and the concept was beautiful. I loved it. And then there was this one that I know the company that does it, but I forget the name of their short, but it was like super stylized. And they were like uh, racing these like kind of like Arctic whales and some distant planet. That was like the whole premise. Like they were all like modified except for one guy. But the style of it looked like a, it, it truly, it did look like a graphic novel come to life. Truly, you know, I was so impressed by it. I was like, man, this is so beautiful. But I think in terms of storytelling, uh, Snow in the Desert was by far my favorite one. That one was super rad. I'm biased too. I think the Santa one was pretty good. <laughs> but yeah, if you guys haven't seen it, it's pretty gross yeah the the i remember when they pitched it to me they're like all right like we want the head to like come out of the butt but it's not really the butt it's like the shoulders and i'm like you hired the right person <laughs> <laughs> i did like several versions of this too but it didn't take long i think it took us like a couple weeks of work and we just we nailed it like they were like i remember in meetings too they're just like oh man it's so bad but that means that you're doing a good job <laughs> That's exactly what we wanted, you know, but it, it's, it's, it's funny. All right. Um, and if you guys are curious what's going on right here, I'm doing five minute paintings here. I'm trying to get faster in my speed painting. I'm trying to see if I can get like stuff done in like a short amount of time. Um, all right. And then Peely, I think you shared some of your work. Let's take a look at this for a second. Uh, yes. Because I know you, you've been going through it. 
and I'm happy to hear that things are coming down a bit. I know it's really rough. I have a close yeah. friend. I have a close friend who is going through a divorce currently and he's him and his, um, well, I guess ex-wife now, because I think they officially are separated. Mm. Um, they're doing some stupid stuff, man. And it's like, um, like, I'm not sure your circumstance, um, but yeah, my friend is doing things that's really disappointing and his, uh, ex-wife is also doing some disappointing things as well you know what i mean yeah yeah and same it, same is happening in my house it's been difficult because we uh, their children are watching them doing really stupid and even awful things that involves us and it's been difficult yeah. sometimes <clears throat> yeah um in fact I'm very sympathetic to this. In fact, um, my other friend and I, and I, we had a, we met up the other day and he was telling me some of the things that was going on. Cause I'm like out of the loop. And uh, I was just like, I feel like we gotta go and just slap him around yeah. a bit. <laughs> because this is, this is bad. Uh, but it's understandable. Like I actually empathize with people that are being separating or are separating because it's rough, man. You know? Mm, yeah. Uh, but it doesn't excuse the behavior. It just, it's, it makes sense why people are acting this way. It just doesn't, it's like, uh, it's like one of those things in the future when they look back, they're going to realize it was a huge mistake. Some of the choices that they made, they just can't see it now. <laughs> so good luck to you. I, I, I really wish you luck. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but with that said, I'm happy to see that you, even during these hard times, you really found some time to kind of get your work going. Uh, you know, when I was going through a pretty bad breakup uh, many years ago, um, I know this isn't common. Most people tend to just kind of um, sit in their sorrow. Uh, for me, when I was like going through this rough time in my life, I actually doubled down in art, you know, um, yep. it was kind of like a, a way to escape rather than like I was just like upset all the time, which which ironically infuriated my ex even further <laughs> you know <laughs> because I, I wasn't so like heartbroken like my heart was absolutely broken you know I was very sad but I didn't show it because I was like always painting you know I was just like grinding hard yeah so uh, I would recommend that if you needed an opportunity to to, to kind of spread your energy out you know what I mean mm -hmm. uh, you, you might find that this is a good way to do that because although it sucks that you're going through it and you're just like trying to like drown your sorrows, uh, this I think was very therapeutic. So I came out of it pretty psychologically okay. You know, mm -hmm. it wasn't so yes. like, and she did some crazy stuff. Um, but I found it was very therapeutic because I was able to just kind of like release my feelings into my artwork. It probably explains my monster designs. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it also was just like a, an opportunity to just be alone, my thoughts and really process the information because we were together mm -hmm. for a long time, you know, so it really, it really did yeah. suck. Um, but I also understand if you just don't want to do shit, you know, I'm just saying that this is my advice. It's not a professional advice. It's personal mm -hmm. advice to you, yeah. it's, it's to you as a friend. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway. Is this also yours or is someone else's? Uh, no, that that's not mine. Okay. Yeah, so so these are cool. I think that the best thing about these is that you really spent the time to really sharpen the blade. I can see that you really worked hard on these. This is really good. Um, one thing I would encourage you to do is try to be careful with your forms. Um, there's two uh -huh. things. There's two things you could do to better your forms. One is to have much more cleaner and more refined shapes. Like there's a lot of lumpiness still. You know, if you look yeah. at this, there's like some bumps and mm -hmm. humps. You want to make sure your shapes are just the shape they're supposed to be. Okay. Okay. And then you have this thing where you're the lines that you're drawing. Like I love putting like trims and armor, like separation on my characters because mm -hmm. it allows me to show the form even better. Uh, but in your case, you're not doing that. Right. And so what ends up happening is you're creating a, a confusing, a confusing yeah. story. So yeah. it's like if you were writing a sentence, like let's think about this as language. Right. Uh, it's like if you're writing a sentence, you know. 
like and you want to tell somebody you want to like you're you want to tell somebody that you're hungry for um ice cream right and the way you wrote the sentence was like yeah you know ice hunger cream eye it's like maybe we can put am somewhere am ice hunger cream eye uh what, what else am i missing four <laughs> okay am ice hunger cream i four right that doesn't make any sense <laughs> you know <laughs> but all the words are there right and i think all the words are there maybe then i'm missing one but you get the point right you really what you're really trying to say is like i am hungry not hunger that's i wrote the wrong word here okay yeah i am hungry for ice cream right yes so let's talk about this visually then. So I, and I might have shown this before, but I want to show it again. It's like if you have a cylinder, right? Right now it's indiscriminate. Like we don't know which way it's really going. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and if I draw a line like here and line right here, you know, mm -hmm. it helps us see, oh, this is like the bottom of it. Right. And the top of it, we can't see it's hidden because of perspective. Right. Mm -hmm. You get that? Like, does that make sense? It should yes. be should be clear, right? But we could take the yeah. same thing and change where we put these things. Now we can see the, the top of this, mm -hmm. right? And the bottom mm -hmm. is now out of view, okay? And all I yeah. did was like add these lines and it changes how we feel about it, okay? Mm -hmm. It's like the sentence, like in order, the order of which we're writing a sentence. Like you can write this sentence differently too. You can write like, um, um uh, you can say like i hunger for ice cream right mm -hmm. instead of i am hungry for ice cream and they would both kind of mean the same thing but they there is like a difference of presence in those sentences same way i feel about the shapes and lines okay so when you draw a shape like this and you draw a line like this you're telling a very cohesive story but what i'm seeing from yours is like the sentence that we see up here which is seems out of order you have lines that are contradicting each other you see that and so now yeah. it's like okay what what is this like which way is this actually going you know what i mean yeah yeah true that that's true yeah so this is something to be careful of okay mm -hmm. uh and this is just a matter of like there's a couple of reasons why this might happen you might be zoomed in too much or you're not thinking about the form as you're rendering you're just focus focus on just like detailing and getting things looking nice mm -hmm. but this is like this problem is usually a foundational problem meaning from the start you should have understood this so that way when you go into the detailing and stuff you're not worried about it but like i said this is one of my favorite things to do is because let's say if i'm drawing armor design like i can like mm -hmm. tell a story with these lines already like i can say oh yeah see the armor is like there i can show you the perspective of the arm mm -hmm. using the armor right yeah. which is nice you know mm -hmm. so uh that's one thing to keep it keep an eye out for okay yeah thank you yeah but good work and i would recommend not worrying about that now though okay don't feel like you have to um um make these corrections on those paintings i'd say just call it done for now Mm -hmm. And then the next time you do some characters, try not to make those mistakes. Okay. Yeah. And good luck with the, the personal stuff I've written for you. Oh, thank you so much. It's much better now, I have to say. Okay. Yeah. And if you can overcome this and you become an amazing concept <laughs> artist, that this makes a great origin story. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so hope everyone comes out of it. Okay. And um, I mean, you know, I, I'm sure it's going to be rough and there's going to be some some bad, you know, blood at the end of it. It's just inevitable. But at least mm -hmm. what you can hopefully get out of it is lessons learned and, um, you know, where people's hearts really are. So, for instance, my closest friend that's going through this, I'm very disappointed in him and I feel like I need to tell him. So, <laughs> you know, yeah uh because i wouldn't be a good friend if i just let him kind of close by absolutely um i agree so uh and if he, he can't handle it then he can't handle it you know so be it <laughs> but this is just some bad stuff so i feel you all right
Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, someone shared something else. Do you want me to talk about this? Who sent this? Oh uh, yeah, that's mine. Um, I was I want to make like um, a study of kind of different uh, light source. So I was uh, looking okay. for your piece, um, the piece you your show um, yesterday. Okay. So I think like, oh, it was cool to make like a light source uh, from the bottom. So I make this this little um, whip and I don't know um, if I'm going for the right way or should I change something? Um, yeah, so whenever you're doing a light source coming from a specific angle, you just got to answer simple questions like, um, like how would that form be approached by that light source? So there's a lot of confusing stories you're telling me here. So for instance, if you're saying the light is coming from the bottom, because it looks like it is from this right here, right? The nose, you know, even like the, some of the neck here. But then the idea that there's a shadow uh, underneath the head kind of throws me off, right? The shadow underneath the nose kind of throws me off. And the light on top of this outfit kind of throws me off. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, it should just be pretty consistent. Like, if we were to think of it like a character being lit from above, you know, we can just do something simple like this. Oops. What the? Why isn't that color picking? It's not working. Is my color picker not working? Let's see. Do, 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 do. Current layer. How long has that been on? <laughs> um, and so I guess it, I didn't notice it because I've been painting only on one layer <laughs> all this time. Um, so if we are doing a light source from above, this is kind of how I'd see it. You know, I'll see it very much like yeah. coming from above. You know what I mean? And all of these forms are being dictated, or all these shapes are being dictated by that simple fact that light is coming from above. You know? And so if I was to tell the same story, Uh, let me do a better job. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So let's say <coughs> that's good. Right. Lights coming from above all of my shapes and shadows are informing so if i just take the same concept but do it from below it's the same principled idea i just would inverse everything pretty much almost oh, oh. sorry i i use the 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 uh, the wrong um, word i mean yeah the light uh from from the bottom from oh i say from the bottom or i say it from above i don't know and uh, that's yeah, part I, I of the mean, problem if, <laughs> like, like if it's not second, clear yeah. like the second I, i'm trying to do something like the second the one i'm doing here right yeah yeah, no, I got it. No, we're, we're not confused here. I'm just saying that um, it will have a completely different aesthetic, right? Because of the way the light's coming in. So I think of it differently. I think of like, oh, the light's coming in from the, the bottom, 
So it's going to create a different shape altogether. It looks remarkably different, right? Like these cheeks and stuff like this, this uh, top part would be pretty much non-existent. I think that we would have some light coming from the, the top of the forehead. And the neck would be pretty illuminated. The top of the torso I would probably have. So it's almost inverted what you have there, you know? And it's gonna look bizarre, you know? And that's kind of why uh, up lighting tends to be more scary, right? Versus, um, what you call it? Top down lighting. You know what I mean? And I think I could do an even better job of this. Yeah, I'm missing this. All right, I'm trying to think of like, the eyelids will be in shadow, the bottom eyelids, we would start getting some of that. You know? And it's just like the lights coming from below. But what I wouldn't do is put light on the top of this, even though I felt like it would make sense, like it feels good, because I want to see the form. Like that's not what it would be, though. You know. Um, and if I if I ended up doing that, I'm doing that for artistic purposes. You know, but I'm not convinced you are doing it specifically for artistic purposes. Okay. And so there's a really good way to experiment with this is just like turn off your lights. Here, let me see. Like get yourself a flashlight. Oh yeah, here we go. <laughs> right, turn off your lights and just see what it'll look like. And you'll see, especially my face, looks like completely different, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and if you use like, oh, hold on. There's this like really cool video too where it shows like one light source, like going and like, multiple directions you know and it takes like one person's face and makes it look completely different you know uh not completely different but different enough right and so whenever i'm like doing a character and i want to really understand a face like i will use like a flashlight in the camera and just look like i'll just study my own face see what's happening but also you could do some cool stuff like go online and get like a 3d model of like a really nicely sculpted head throw it into a 3d software with a light source and just do what i just did there but in 3d and what's beautiful in 3d is you could save it and screenshot it and do it in multiple angles but uh i would not guess it i would try to understand it but it's the same idea of like if you don't know how to render a sphere from the bottom you're gonna have a harder time rendering, you know, um, what you call it, like a human head from the bottom. This brush is not as easy. Some of the other brushes I would normally use to do this, but you get the point, you know? Yeah. Like try rendering simple objects like spheres, cubes and stuff like that. See what happens and just move the light around, okay? <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank now, you. Now, now let's take some questions. I've got one. Except from Elliot. All right. Someone else go. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, go ahead. So once you uh, like were in the studio, like you got, I think you started work at like Sony Santa Monica, right? Heck that was yeah. like your first. My Once you're in there, big game studio. I worked at a smaller one before that, but it wasn't too awesome. Okay, so like once you got into that, how long did you work there? Uh, for about a year and a half. Okay, what were like some of the like problems that you didn't foresee as a student or as someone trying to like stuff you'd only get once you're there? Uh, that's actually the great irony. Um, the opposite happened. Meaning that I realized that nobody knows what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> okay. So when I was at the smaller studio, I was like, oh man, these guys don't know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. <laughs> you know? and I was like, if only they knew. 
<laughs> and then I worked at Sony Santa Monica and I was like, oh no, everybody's fucking like lost. It's just that the difference is that uh, we had a better chance of getting out. <laughs> that makes sense, <laughs> yeah. you know, um, than the small studio I was at, which ultimately closed down. Right. Uh, like, let me, let me point to a couple or let me point to several dozen examples or actually at least just a, like a several examples. And then from that, you could extrapolate dozens. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, so, so let's start with Sony Santa Monica. When they made the, the latest God of War that came out, right? The company was on the brink of shutting down. Okay. My friend told me this. He said that they didn't know. Like him and his co-workers had no idea it was that close. Um, he said after the game came out and after the game has been out for several months and was profitable, you know, then the leads were like, Brick came out and said, y'all, like we almost shut down. <laughs> and he said, this is why like many of the leads would stay several hours extra a week after work because they were really making sure that the game would ship proper, you know? Yeah. And um, he was just bewildered by this fact. He's like, oh my God, are you crazy? Are you guys serious? He's like, yeah. And um, and they said, and we waited until the game was profitable because it didn't, it took like six months till we actually broke even and now we're making profit, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's like, damn, that's crazy. And you would think, well, that game was great. Like, of course they did well. Like, they were close to not doing so well. Okay. So, so that's that's the company I work for. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, Naughty Dog, right? Notoriously known for huge turnover rates because people hate working there. They do like tons of crunch, right? Um, and it's just overwhelming amounts of work. And the payoff is just not as good as you might think. Okay. It's cool to be like, I worked on The Last of Us or Uncharted because these games are incredibly popular. But some people um, quit the industry entirely after working for studios like this. Okay. In fact, I, I, I know people recently at a studio that I, I've worked, worked with where like people literally, two people left the studio. Uh, to and also left the industry <laughs> because they're wow. so stressed out. Yeah. Okay. Like one went to become a lawyer and the other one <laughs> went to get um, a PhD in like social, the social sciences. Yeah, yeah. Like completely left the industry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And um, and then uh, Blizzard. Like I remember I was at a, a different company and we were talking about game design and they were like you know blocking level level blockouts that's the way to do it like ugh, i mean blizzard does it i don't know why we're not doing it here at our big name studio and i said blizzard did that but they've also like started over three of their games after seven years of development starcraft seven years start restart <laughs> completely restarted uh world of warcraft seven years completely restarted you know overwatch was not even overwatch it was like a different entirely different game uh Project Titan, seven years, completely scrapped it, you know? And the current game that they're working on, it's the same shit is happening, you know? Um, and and I'm, I love my, myself some Blizzard. I worked at Blizzard, and I love working at Blizzard. But I was working for the team that actually made stuff, <laughs> which was the cinematic <laughs> team, right? So we were making stuff every, like, every few months. Something was coming out, and it was awesome, right? Um, or at least within a year, you know what I mean? Where if I was working on the Diablo team, I wouldn't like they just announced Diablo 4, but they were working on Diablo 4 when I was working at Blizzard, which was wow. several years ago. <laughs> okay. And I knew that they were working on Diablo 4, right? And then uh, when they announced it, I was like, oh my God, they just announced it, <laughs> you know? And so, um, so yeah. Uh, well, who else? Bethesda. I've already. They, they've already revealed their cards with all their shitty games. Uh, <laughs> you know, I don't know why people like them in the first place. I, I've never liked their games. <laughs> I love them, man. I love them. Yeah, I know you do. And like, everyone's just like, <laughs> everyone's like, oh, man, Fallout, like shitty game. And I like, oh, like the Elder Scrolls games, shitty games. <laughs> like they're all fucking shitty. They don't work. They're all broken. The game mechanics aren't that fun. They're using like archaic engines. If you work at Bethesda and you're listening, because I, I do release these <laughs> these Q and A's eventually, <laughs> yeah. uh, 
I'm sorry, man. It's just how I feel, <laughs> you know, but yet they keep doing it. Right. And like internally, they have lots of discussions about like changing their pipeline and tools. Like this is not news to them. They, they know, <laughs> you know, and yeah. I think it was fallout 76 when I think fans were finally like, wait, are these games actually good though? <laughs> you know, like, yeah, are, like, like people were complaining much. about like all these, like, oh my god, this game's so broken. It's like, dude, have you not played any of their other games? Like, what are you talking about? I feel like the charm they just wore fell off behind the times a bit, and with the next <laughs> one that come that's gonna come out, we're gonna I'm gonna know if they're like still good. Does that make sense? Like they you made games still that were still the same crappy company, or they're finally becoming a good company. <laughs> Well, if with 76. <laughs> like, if we, <clears throat> let's not try to say 76 is not a like example of like, oh my God, they make that this is like a bad game. Like, they really messed up this time. I'm saying that that's what they've been doing this whole time. It's just for whatever reason, it's like everybody's been drinking and had like uh, beer go- goggles on this uh-huh. whole time. And then they just sobered up <laughs> and they're like, why is this game so bad? I'm telling you, it's it's a it's a symptom, not a it's not a some sort of uh, uh, what is it outlier situation. I'm yeah. saying no, this is this is the company, <laughs> this is the kind of games they make, and so I like to me, and this is no hate to the studio. I'm just saying uh, to me, like I'm making a larger point, which is that like they, including many other studios, just don't know what they're doing right and i don't think this is a fault of like game studios in general i think this is like just how a lot of things are okay that there's only very few places that uh get it right and i don't mean just like video game studios in general i'm saying like everything like including girl or girls <laughs> world governments you know yeah, same thing. yeah i think it's the same like i feel like at some point like the only conservative argument that I, I do strongly have a, a, a an agreement with is that government is inefficient, right? But it's not because I think government in itself is inefficient, right? I think it's just people in general are inefficient. And as you increase that stuff in scale, right? And complicate like the systems in, t- in, in place to try to manage, you know, people like, the, like in with whether it's a corporation or it's like a government, then more likely you're going to have failure of outcome, a good positive outcomes, you know? And so that's why I'm like a big fan of universals situations and solutions, right? Because you just kind of simplify, <laughs> you know? So the small government argument, I'm not a big fan of either, but I am a big fan of simpler, uh, streamlined government, right? Like things shouldn't be so goddamn complicated. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. Um, and there are plenty of examples of this uh, in, gov- in different world governments, as well as like com- companies, you know, the more streamlined the company is. So if you look at like indie development, like small studios, right? They seem to kind of like make really cool games and it looks like pretty fast, right? Almost effortlessly, you know? And then you look at like these major studios and you're like, why can't they get a game out in like a freaking a y- in seven years, you know? And it's just like, once you start to add complexity, you know, it just, it just, it's like a force multiplier in terms of like how much harder you've just made the project. You know, there's a term for this in the industry, which is like feature creep, you know, but indie studios are not immune to this feature creep problem either. You know, I'm just saying when you have like a team of two people, you you're more likely to realize this feature creep, (laughs) you know, like much sooner and you can kind of divert. Right. Versus like if you have a team of hundreds and then you don't realize until two months in, you know, uh, that's way suckier. <laughs> okay. And that's what ends up happening pretty frequently. Um, me and my game director have conversations about this a lot. And so, you know, cause I was telling about our own project that we're working on. I was like, yeah, the solution to this is we just don't get more talent. We just keep our team tight and just make the scope smaller, you know? Just make the game smaller. Don't make the game bigger. And then that means we have to hire more people, right? Like just hire, just keep the same people and just make the team tight, you know? And uh, him and I agree on a lot of things, this included, you know? And so 
um going back to your your original question though like what what can you expect um i think even in your case uh you would find this out like nobody knows what they're doing and i don't mean to say this like i'm i do know what i'm doing i'm just saying like i thought somebody had the rule book yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. and then i i had to learn the hard way too along along with everybody else you know yeah that's actually like kind of a I don't know the word, but like it's it, it's helpful because the guys I'm working for now, I keep finding myself being like, God, why do they want to do it this way? You know, and I don't really voice that. I'm like, I, I understand that it's like a job and they're paying me and yada, yada. Yeah, that's good. But like, I'm kind of, I'm just like, oh, why do you like, makes no sense. Yeah, well, and, people uh, don't make sense, you know. <laughs> I, I'm good to know that that's going to, like, it's a motif of life. Be very, be very uh, clear to what I'm telling you. I'm not even saying that me saying this means that I know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm just saying when I say nobody knows what they're doing, I'm including in myself in that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And I'm including you as well. All right. Oh, I'm sure. Because uh, I worked at a studio with a good friend of mine who's the art director of the project. And we would have these hour long discussions after work. Because he was really stressing out a lot, you know. In fact, this reminds me. I should check in with the guy, see how he's doing. Um, and he he was telling me he's just like it's so crazy because I've been working, you know, on this 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 team. And one of the first things I told myself was like, I'm going to run it differently than we did at Blizzard, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this. I'm going to listen to people. We're going to like have like democracy, <laughs> you know. It's like this utopian mentality. And I was just like, oh, yeah, see, you see, you fell for the trap to think that that uh, the people that you used to work for didn't think that way. <laughs> you 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 were in this mindset that what these people that we used to work for were like, nope, I'm going to run it like a crazy troubled bureaucracy, um, like corporate, like shill. <laughs> you know yeah. it's all about the money and like don't care about my individual staff members you know i'm gonna run it like this because that's just how we do things and then you over here are thinking no nah, it's not how it's supposed to be i'm gonna when i get my chance i'm gonna show them you know and i said that's that's the great um problem that you've just uh put yourself in and i've talked to you guys about this a lot just assume you don't know shit right because if you think you if you think you have the right, right way to do it and then you come to find out you start making the same choices you're making the same calls <laughs> you know because you realize it's fucking hard and you have to kind of do that right yeah uh and then because you such such terrible foundations you actually become worse than the people you used to work for right and i told him that's exactly what happened you're worse dude you're like a worse boss right and he didn't he didn't like i mean he he took that he's a very good artist and a very good person so he took that really well but he didn't like hearing that you know but it was yeah. the truth i was like you're terrible at this man like you're you're doing a really bad job and it's because you thought you knew <laughs> you know and you know after everything was said and done he he came to me and he was like you're right man like he's like i in fact i took this new job and i'm not doing art director i'm like i just want to be a concept artist and I was like, I think, yeah, that's where you belong. Like, I think a lead concept artist is where you belong, you know? Like someone who can help inspire the other concept guys. That's probably what made you think that you could be a complete leader in the, in the whole sense. But you didn't understand the ramifications of what that meant, you know? And, uh, and yeah, it was really bad, bad news bears. Like, it was so bad. Um, there was like some employees that were just completely like confused on what was going on the art direction was all over the place there was one person that we had on staff that was just like a bully to everybody and was like kind of like a know-it-all um and because of that like we just like were slowing our progress on making anything valuable was so fucking slow it took us forever you know uh because this guy was just shoehorning his all of his ideas to everybody and there were a lot of them were just wrong and not like cooperative you know but because my guy was just trying to like, well, he's an expert and like, I don't want to like discount his opinion. And I said, you know, when my kids want to eat candy all day, it's not that I don't love my kids when I say no to them. <laughs> it's the opposite, you know, 
is because I know that if they eat candy all day, they're going to have really bad teeth and they're going to have really bad health, you know? Uh, leaving my kids to eat and drink whatever the hell they want, it's going to ultimately lead them to a terrible health outcome and bad relationship with food. And I said, I don't want to compare this or coworker to like a child. I think that what ends up happening is that pe- like as adults, we just get better at arguing for our bad habits, <laughs> you know, where a kid doesn't have good arguments. So it's much easier to overcome them. Right. Yeah. Um, but we all like pretty much still kids, you know, and he didn't think of it that way. He's just like, wow, okay, that makes a lot of sense. And that's like, and also just because someone's an expert doesn't mean that they know everything. Uh, this is why if you even look at sciences, they do stuff like peer review and meta-analysis. Peer review is when you have other experts criticize other experts' opinions and findings, right? And meta-analysis is when you look at the broader evidence in its totality and kind of see where the truth really lives, you know? And what you're doing is like what like these fucking flat earth conspiracy theorists do. They find like one article, <laughs> right? That agrees with what their uh, argument is and you're just running with it. Like you're just listening to this one guy when you have literally dozens of people on your team telling you that he's wrong, right? It's like, it's madness, you know? It was like, even if he was right, uh, in terms of team morality, you would need to find a way to be able to listen to the rest of your team so that they can feel like they're heard, you know? Yeah. Um, and he, he learned the hard way. Like people who worked under that specific coworker I'm talking about um, quit, yeah. like two people quit. And they specifically listed because of that person. And I said, he's a literally a net value to the studio, you know, uh, a net negative value you know and yeah. yeah and my buddy was like blown away by all this and i'm not i'm not saying this as i'm innocent from um like ignorance and naiveness too i have made terrible mistakes as well and i continue to still it's never going to end <laughs> you know um so i include myself in this equation right and so i think that it's just important to respect that and not expect that somebody's got the answers. Um, some people will have more wisdom than others. Like I think that I got some good insight on a lot of different things, especially when it comes to, <laughs> especially when it comes to concept art. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, you guys want to see my baby? Hold on for a second. I heard him crying, but then he came in here. That was his daddy. Here comes that. We don't even gotta make him look cute. He's always cute. His ears coming out. Da da. The chosen oh, one. Oh, really cute. Oh my god. A little oh. thing. Oh my god. The chosen so one. Cute. Hello, baby. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. <laughs> all, all the uh, my female students are like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> all, all the guy, all the guy students are like, that's cute, baby. Imagine his first words will be like, I'm gonna start real simple. <laughs> yeah, here. Looking at the line, staring at the ring. Line. Start painting and see his first. He, he's really wake up. <laughs> yeah, he's like really awake. Yeah. Eli, <gasps> can you guys hear him? Say something, Eli. <laughs> uh, I'm Aww. almost done, actually. Ten more minutes. It's like the Lion King. <laughs> He's beautiful. All right. What set up professional audio and audio settings? How dare they say my son's not professional audio? <laughs> There's just like this thing that just popped up. Um, but yeah, like I said, um, not everybody's an expert, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, everybody makes mistakes. Uh, having empathy for one another is really what matters, right? So I think why I do really well in the industry. <laughs> And why, um, even like as an art director, I've been told I'm like one of the best art directors that people's ever worked with, right? 
And it's not because I know everything, <laughs> right? It's because I don't allow people to think that they know everything. Does this make sense? So I'll be in meetings where I was like, hey, we should try this thing, you know? And this is not because I think it's the best way. This is uh, like, I'm a, I like to think of as a problem solver. I try to come up with solutions to problems, even if they're not the right solution. I'd like to keep us thinking of solution oriented stuff, right? And then one of the people in the meeting is like, oh, that's a terrible idea, right? And I looked at them and I was just like, then explain to me why it's a terrible idea, right? It's just not good. Like people don't do it in the industry. And I said, but why? Why don't people do it in the industry? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So you can't just tell me that people don't do it. There's a lots of stuff that people don't do in the industry. And guess what? Everybody fucking does overtime. Everybody fucking like don't see their kids. Nobody shifts the game on time. People lose their careers. Uh, you know, studios shut down. Um, games come out like flawed, buggy. So if you're saying that we're going to do something that every other studio does, and that's your argument, I'm telling, this is my counter argument, <laughs> you know, is like fucking hell no. Like, do you want to work overtime? Because that's what everyone else does, you know? And then he was just like, well, oh, well, let me like, like, well, it's just that, you know, you don't see it happen that much in the industry, <laughs> you know? And I was like, okay, that's fine. But tell me why it's a bad idea. Like, explain to me why it's a bad idea. I don't care that other people do or do not do it, right? I want to know why they don't do it. And if it makes sense, absolutely, dude, I'm backing off, right? But you, you can't just, like, do a blanket, like, oh, well, nobody else does it, <laughs> you know? And so they actually had to think about it, right? Like, for once. And uh, after that meeting, uh, one of the guys came back to me, the one that like, had that kind of sentiment. He's like, you know, like I thought about it. It's like, maybe there is a way we can do it the way you suggested, but not exactly like what you said it, but like there's this other technique that I read about. And I think there might be some truth to what you're saying, but like, not exactly. It's like this thing. And he sent me an article and I was like, no, oh, this looks like an awesome solution. Do you think we could try it out like tomorrow? He's like, yeah, yeah, actually, I already tried it today, and it, like, it's pretty cool, and I think we can do it. Uh, I just got to get more research, so yeah, I'll take tomorrow to spend some more time figuring it out, you know? And then we ended up doing it, right? Um, I remember when I was in another meeting, an artist was like, uh, I'll say, hey, there's something wrong with your blueprints here in Unreal, right? And they're like, trust me, it's not the blueprints. And I was like, uh, no, nah, I'm not going to just trust you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I need some proof, bro. You can't just, you guys can't just get away. with was like, just fucking trust me. So, you know, that's not like, could you imagine if we were building a car that people had to drive and people, we just say, trust me, the airbags work. Have you tested it? No, nah, just trust me. They just work. Like, no, you just cannot do that. Right. You have to have like, there's regulations and systems in place that check for people's negligence, you know? Because even if someone who's highly experienced will make a mistake, including myself, right? And I, in fact, I encourage my um, my coworkers to tell me when I'm fucking up. You know what I mean? Um, and I'm uh, I lead by example because, like, sometimes I'll be in meetings and I'll make a point, and somebody they started to learn that uh, they can't just say shit. They have to like give some concrete, <laughs> you know, uh, examples of why they think they're right, like some actual solutions. And I'll be like, that's fucking, you're right. Like, I didn't consider that. You're absolutely right, though. Let's do that instead, right? Yeah. Instead of being defensive and being like, well, I'm fucking smarter than you. I am the art director, so I have to be right. It's like, no, you know, I like to think of myself as like the general who goes into battle with his soldiers, you know? Meaning that if I'm telling you we're going to use this type of strategy to combat our enemies, uh, I trust this so much that I'm also going into battle with you, you know? meaning that my life is also on the line versus just some sort of, uh, you know, general on the hill playing war games, right? Yeah. And so I think that that kind of attitude, is, even if at a subordinate level, like as just a staffer, like a more positive, always like if someone's like, hey, do you think you can try this out? And even if you think like, oh, that doesn't work or that's too correct and crazy or that's too big or that's too hard, but your attitude is like, yeah, let's, fight, let's, let's figure it out. Let's try it out, you know? Even if you don't think that it could work, but you're just automatically like, no, nah, let's try it, right? And then uh, to your surprise, it fucking works, 
you know, you don't look like a dumbass, you know, <laughs> you look like a team player, right? Uh, if you try it and it doesn't work, right, then you can be like, ah, oh, we have some substance to why it doesn't work, okay? A more objective conversation around it, you know what I mean? And I've only am in these situations when I debate people, like, where I'm like, no, you're just, like, objectively wrong here, when I know for sure, like, I have just facts on facts, right? A uh, good example is one time a, a modeler, I asked him to make something darker because it would just look cooler because it would actually create more contrast, which I just know is a fucking fact. This is like what I do really great is this specific thing, just make art good, <laughs> you know? And he was like, well, you like scientifically that wouldn't exact exist. It's not, it's impossible. And he's like, and also black doesn't really exist. Like there's no such thing as black. And I was just like, okay. You know, if you want to get into debating the physics of colors, we, we could do that some other time. Um, but we're making a fantasy game with like fucking dragons and shit. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. like this science stuff. You're, you're, it's this is not. We're not working for Christopher Nolan. You know, <laughs> this is not for National Geographic. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what are we doing here? We're trying to make cool looking stuff, and right now it's really hard to tell that this shape is there because it's like literally blends with everything else, you know? Um, and, and it was just like such a thing, you know, but that's like the only time and rarely do I ever get in those types of conversations. It's usually whenever I can tell somebody's just arguing for the sake of arguing like a natural contrarian, you know, uh, those are my least favorite people to work around uh, because Eve, like, it's like the willfully ignorant types, you know, like they, like if you were just having a conversation with them, any other context, they would almost certainly agree with you. Right. But because it's like in this context of like superiority, like they just disagree with you because they feel like they have to, to be on top. And it's like a detriment to the overall project to do that, you know? And so I usually, um, navigate that by just constantly debating them to get them to kind of realize that they agree with me <laughs> you know they're just arguing just for the sake of arguing you know and then, and sometimes it comes at the cost of just saying that i was wrong i do what i call the daffy duck approach where i just repeat what they said as if it was their idea <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. and then just move on with my life and so uh yeah you'll find a lot of this no matter where you go, like even inside of our or outside of our industry, you know, this is something I don't think is universal to the game industry. It's just that uh, to kind of answer your question and just kind of answer us, answer a couple more questions now because I realize we've been ranting about this for a while is that you, you'll be surprised how unsurprising <laughs> it is. The okay. grass is always greener. Just remember that. You know, people always think it's better somewhere else. And then they get there and they're like, oh, I bet it's better over there. And then they get there and they're like, well, I bet it's better over here. And then they get there, you know, I've been doing the opposite. I'm trying to go back <laughs> to simpler life. You know, this is why I mentioned I was like moving to Nicaragua, right? Because I'm like, I'm, I'm about that simple life. I'm trying to get rid of all this like extra stuff, extra burdens that I've been putting on myself chasing that rabbit you know it's like you know it's okay i don't need to finish a race i'll just stop where i'm at i liked it a couple miles back <laughs> you know and it was a lot easier for me and so yeah that'll, that'll be my advice and insight for you bud all right appreciate it man i could take two more questions and then i gotta get out of here hey can i ask a, a question of course Okay, I was like, I was expecting like not from you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're expecting like not from Serbian bastards. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> hey, by the way, like uh, I have some news about I I heard you when you spoke about love, death, and robots. Um, Milan was supposed Milan Nikolic was supposed to work on that, like the same part, but it it felt nothing like at at the end. But uh, then, like he's working this year, like he had a uh, thing, he had an episode work uh, where he worked. It was like awesome. So, like yeah, I don't know, awesome. so super amazing. Hey, it is super uh, amazing. Hey, I'm, I'm proud of him. Uh, <laughs> pardon? 
Yeah, if you ever see him, tell him I'm proud of him. Give him a hug. Ah, okay, okay, okay. okay yeah, well, Say, thank you. this is from your Serbian bastard father. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, hey, um, the question. Um, okay, let me see. For example, when you place up a good base, like uh, if you do a character, like and you, when you settle up all the things, like on uh, the shape, design, and the, the things like that, and mm -hmm. When you start adding things such as light, such as texture, etc., how much time do you think um, I should focus or we should focus on each place individually? Like um, okay. sometimes I feel like maybe I'm losing too much time on some places. Uh, you know, so I start adding light and then texture, and when I move to another uh, part of the body, I'm like, okay, this is not something is not uh, connecting. And how much time, what kind of approach do you think we should, uh, we should take, we should have? So the, the quickest way I can answer this is that, yeah, don't worry about um, how long you should do stuff. Just worry about like the stages in which you feel confident to move forward. So time comes later once you already build a process that you feel good about. Okay. And so, so for instance, um if you find that you keep like redoing your lights and your forms uh maybe that's because your design wasn't good from the start so that means you might need to spend more time uh or more at the stage one of design before you even continue to, to the next stage of lighting and rendering right uh so for me i usually tell people you know what i showed you already with the thumbnail phase like like make sure it's clear before you move forward Okay. Uh, and then once you have that clarity, then you can decide to push forward. Uh, but until then, uh, stay still, you know, stay focused on just getting better at the design part, you know, uh -huh. and then the next, the next phase usually is just refinement and detailing. And honestly, it's it falls in the same category of like lighting and rendering for me. So really what I'm, I'm getting across to you, what I'm going to just ultimately say is that until you feel you know what you're doing, it's probably best to just kind of sit still for a second, you know? Um, so like really stay in that iterative design phase until you feel like you have your iteration and design figured out. Um, moving too quickly can result in a lot of changes, you know? I find that a lot of times the reason why my painting takes long to finish is because I've made a lot of mistakes at the beginning. Okay. Uh, if you try to not make those mistakes in the beginning, you have a higher chance of not wasting time, if you will, you know? Um, so if you look at like what I did with this design here, right, I started with like the shapes and now I'm just filling it out. Right. Mm -hmm. And I tell myself that I get, uh, I have, roughly like the first five minutes to decide how I feel about my image. Now, obviously I'm doing these whole things in five minutes. Okay. So like, there's really not that much time to, to discover that. So this is probably in the first minute or so I have to decide, but if we were to, to extrapolate that, it's like, yeah, the first, the first minute is just me trying to figure out the proportions, the shapes and the overall design. Right. And if I don't like it, like for now, I'm like, oh, I feel like I can make it better. Then I would, I would imp implement a, another piece of the shape or some sort of design change to this, to make up for what I don't like, or just start over, you know? And right now these are supposed to be just studies anyways. So I'm not really too worried about whether they are good or not. Right. I'm more worried about how I felt about them and what I could have done better, you know? And I'll just try again. And so for me, like if you go back and look at all these, I'm, I'm doing what I'm teaching. I'm showing you how to like get the idea out right away, you know? But if I was to actually sit still and try to paint something a little bit more with some class, yeah, I spend a lot of the, the time making sure that it makes sense. Okay. Like that this first 
drawing, whatever it's going to be, is the going to be the final the drawing that I'm going for. You know what I mean? Like I'm making sure that all the shapes and the, the, the patterns, the lighting, potential lighting is all there before I even commit to anything. Okay. Like I'll just spend as much time needed, but I find that a lot of people tend to try to jump the gun too soon, right? Try to get all and the cool that's, stuff that's like right away. Yeah. And then when I have to connect it, connect it with the rest of the character, it sucks. Yeah. So like you want to make it look good, even at the most basic form. And then anything that happens after that usually is going to be a success. Usually not always, but usually. Okay. And so I'll just sit here until this starts to look good. Uh, and I usually don't give myself like days or anything either. I don't spend like freaking seven hours on this early stage. Right. Uh, I, I make up my mind after like, let's say for you, an hour would be a good amount of time. And if you don't like it, then do another iteration. It's okay. There's no one said you can't draw again, <laughs> you know? That's a good advice. Thank you. Yeah. Like try another version, but absolutely try, you know, do the first one and really try to make it good. Give it a good shake, you know? Uh, but at some point you got to throw in the towel, you know, you're getting knocked out. You need to like, just, just, just let it be. It was a, it was a failed at first attempt. Let's try another yeah. one. You know, it might not be a failed attempt. It might, it might just give you more respect for the next versions that you do right after. You know? So, so for me, I'm still not satisfied with this, this outcome. I'm feeling better though. I'm feeling like I'm getting there, but I'm like, okay, I need to like add more variety throughout this design. It's feeling very uh, abstract, you know? And that's what I'm doing. I'm just like, okay. I like, that's just hit my mind. So now I'm like, all right, let me try to find ways to change this to feel a little bit cooler. And I'm trying to like not add crazy contrast all the time. But you know, I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna do it because it's gonna make me feel good about this overall design. And it is, it's working out, right? And now I'm like, okay, now we're starting to get somewhere where I can probably begin rendering it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But it's already looking fine at this stage. Does that make sense? Like there's really no need to kind of like pursue, pursue any further, like the overall design. Um, I can kind of go from here. I can add more details. I can do that, of course, but I can also just begin rendering this and make this look the best I can. And when you start rendering, do you focus, like, where do you want to focus on first? Like, uh, do you pick some, like, f uh, where the eyes will go first? For example, on uh, on that shape, like on mm -hmm. the arm or on the horns, whatever that, that is on the head. Do you start I, from um, there? Or, uh -huh. Yeah, I, uh, I just start from the focal point and then just spread out like as like a ripples. I don't stay in one spot for too long. Uh, I call it the gradation of detail. So once you have the full picture in mind of like the character, then you start to focus on the focal point and then you don't stay there for too long. Let's say like half an hour, then you move on to like maybe the shoulders on this character, mm -hmm. stay there for about like 20 minutes, then move to like the legs and hands, stay there for like 20 minutes, go to the horns, stay there for 20 minutes, can go back to the face, spend 30 minutes, like a little bit longer, but never that much longer, you know? Yeah. But uh, I honestly move even faster than that. Like I spend like a few minutes in each spot and I just keep bouncing around a lot until the picture starts to come into focus. I almost hardly zoom in unless I'm really going to render town, you know? Yeah, uh, once I remember, I watched you paint something uh -huh. and I was like, okay, now I'm going to figure out, I'm going to write down or maybe just follow what is he focusing on? What, where, what is he painting? Where is he painting? For how yeah. long? And I was like, oh my, my, <laughs> I cannot, I cannot follow this. So I need yeah, to I am, ask uh, you. Yeah, I, I, the whole thing is just constantly going through layers. So uh, I focus on big picture. And move around quickly because I want to get the big idea out of the way. So, anyway, I guess. Thank you. 
It's been an honor. I appreciate oh. you guys. Oh, what? Is there one? Is there one more question? Yeah, you know what? Let's take that one more question. I did say two. That's right. I forgot. Okay. okay. All right. I'm so, running a little uh, over. I forgot. My question is: uh, Should I use my real name as, like, you know, like my so online ID for like beginning my career, or should I use my cool rad uh, online social media name that I came up with? <laughs> I, I think alias works better, especially if you have a common name like myself. Anthony Jones is pretty common, um, but an alias is cooler because. Uh, it gives you an opportunity to be anonymous if you want to, right? Um, but I think people might still know your name name, but a good example of people who don't know the person's real name is like Sparth. Like very few people know his actual real name, you know, but most people know uh, of his work, right? Um, and there's several different examples of this. Um, but to me, it's also easier to remember too. If it's like something a little unique. You know, robot pencil is just easier for people to remember. And it's like you Google robot pencil. I'm always like the first that comes up, you know? And so, yeah, I highly encourage aliases uh, for multitudes of reasons. Um, but I think the most valuable reason is if you have a very common name, <laughs> it just makes it easier to not worry about it. Right. So my friend, John Park, there's like several John Parks that are concept artists, <laughs> you know, Luckily, he's like the number one, but it, it still happens occasionally to the other people think that he, they they think, other people think that they are, a he, uh, see, I'm already confused. Other people think that the other John Parks are the, the first John Park, if that makes sense. So take that information how you will. But I got to get out of here, guys. It's been an honor. I appreciate you guys. You guys have been great. And, uh, you know, keep on working super hard don't be strangers and i'll talk to you guys when i talk to you guys be safe bye guys thank you, thank you so much bye. 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 bye thank you so much thank you for watching this video i appreciate it please subscribe to watch more in the future if you like the video i would appreciate a thumbs up if you like this content you can go to my website robotpencil.net where you can find mentorships tutorials and a patreon to get more exclusive content Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.